Hey guys, we're moving on to section two of unit two. We are gonna look at equations and we're gonna say if these equations have one solution, no solution at all, or an infinite possibility, infinite number of solutions. This sign that looks kind of like a sideways eight, I'm not the best at drawing it, but it looks like this is the infinity sign. It means the solutions never stop coming. And I think the best way for me to show you that is to just do the math. So let's work on this one that's in black. We're gonna combine like terms. So I've got negative seven X plus two equals negative seven X plus two. Oops, sorry about that line. Sometimes my pen acts up on me. All right, now if I add seven X and add seven X, they get rid of each other. Now I've got two equals two. So if your answer is true like this, then you have an infinite number of solutions. This answer could have been five equals five, 12 equals 12, 1,064 equals 1,064. If it's something like that, if it's a true case, if it's X equals X, then you have an infinite number of solutions. What that means is we could put any number in for X. We could say X equals three. Then we could go in here and put a three and a three and a three, and we would solve this problem and we would get the correct answer. We could say X equals 24. And we could put 24 here and 24 here and 24 here, and we would get a correct answer. Because this solution, this equation has infinite many solutions. Now, let's do this one. 7x plus 3, I don't have any like terms over there. 7x plus 3 equals negative 7x plus 2, because I combined those. Now, add 7x, add 7x. That gets rid of both of those. Now I have 3 equals 2. Well, 3 doesn't equal 2. And I didn't make a mistake. I'm sure of that. So if this answer is not true, then it means you have no solution. I can go over here and write infinite solutions. Now, let's solve the last one. All right, let's add 7x, add 7x. And then I've got three equals nine X plus two. Let's subtract two and subtract two. And now I've got one equals nine X. And you should know how to solve for X here. Divide by nine, divide by nine. And I've got one ninth equals X. This equation has exactly one solution. It has one solution because it says X equals and a number. This one has no solution because we solved it out correctly, but our answer wasn't right. Three doesn't equal two. So that means no solution. This one, I got two equals two. So it's an infinite amount of solutions. You need to remember those rules. If you get a number equals the same number, it can be six equals six. It can be 
84 equals 84. That doesn't matter. If you get a true statement here, then you have an infinite number of solutions. If you get an incorrect statement, three does not equal two, then it's no solution. And if you get X equals, and then a number, you have exactly one solution to your equation. Let's do a couple more. Write these down because they're a little bit trickier to make up in my head. 5x plus 8 minus 7x equals 4x minus 1. What do we do here? Let's combine these x's. So we've got negative 2x plus 8. Negative 2x plus 8 equals 4x minus 1. Now we can add one, add one, and then that goes away. And we've got negative two X plus nine equals four X. Now we can add two X, add two X. And then we've got nine equals six X. Now we can divide by six, divide by six, and we've got nine sixths equals X. And of course we would wanna simplify that. This is three goes into both of those. So it'd be three over two, one and one half equals X. But we got an answer. We got one and a half equals X. So is this no solution, infinite amount of solutions, or one solution? This is one solution. Because we got an answer equals X. Let's do another one. Alrighty. 7y minus 8 equals 7y plus 42. Well, first let's write it out easily. Let's do 7y minus 7 times 8 is 56 equals 7y plus 42. Now we need to combine our like terms. I can subtract 7y and subtract 7y. And now I've got negative 56 equals 42. Is that correct? Does negative 56 equal 42? No. So the answer is no solution. Now. Actually, before I move on, let me stop. I understand that all the way up until this point in your life in math, equations have always had an answer. But things are changing now. Now, the correct answer might be there is no answer, no solution. So, if you're working on a problem and you get to an answer that says negative 56 equals 42, don't freak out and say, oh, I did something wrong. Maybe there is no solution to that equation. And the actual answer is there is no solution. Let's do another one. 3y plus 41 equals 3y plus 123. Well, I do my factoring. So 3y plus 
341 times 3 is 123 equals 3y plus 123 minus 3y minus 3y minus 123. Now about 0 over here, minus 123, and 0 over here. 0 equals 0. So this means infinite, infinite number of solutions. Infinite number of solutions because I got zero equals zero. I, it could have been three equals three. It could have been eight equals eight. It could have been 64 equals 64. If what you get is a true statement, then you have infinite number of solutions. Let's do another one. Negative two Z plus 10 plus seven Z equals 16 Z plus seven. Let's combine our like terms. Seven minus two is five Z plus 10 equals 16 Z plus seven. Let's subtract seven, subtract seven. Now I've got five Z plus three equals 16 Z. Let's subtract five Z, subtract five Z. Now I've got three equals 11 Z. Solve for Z, divide by 11, divide by 11, three elevenths equals Z. I got a number over here and a variable over here. Number equals variable. This has one solution. Let's see here. I have one more we can do. Seven Y minus eight equals seven Y plus 42. We already did this one, didn't we? No, I don't think we did. Whatever. Seven Y minus 56 equals seven Y plus 42. Let's subtract seven Y, subtract seven Y, add 56, add 56, and we've got zero equals 98. Does zero equal 98? No, zero does not equal 98. So there is no solution. Okay, I hope you guys get it. So if you get x equals x, then you have an infinite amount of solutions. If you get x equals y, then you have no solutions because x doesn't equal y. If you get a number, like if you get an actual numerical answer, equals x, then you have one solution. Let's see, I'm gonna go in here and go three equals three, 
for x equals x. I'm gonna have three equals four, and I'm gonna say three equals x. Just so you guys, some people do really well when I use variables, and some people you do really well when I do numbers. So if you get three equals three, then you have an infinite amount of solutions. If you get three equals four, no solutions. If you get three equals X, then there's one solution. And it doesn't have to be three, it can be any number. I just randomly chose three right then. If you get one number equals the same number, you have an infinite amount of solutions. If you get one number equals a, some different number, then you have no solution at all. And if you have a number equals X, then you have exactly one solution. Okay, if anyone has any questions, let me know.